G'day guys, welcome to the Intel Extreme Masters in Shanghai, first stop, season number eight. Uh, I'm a new face. Hello, I'm Maynard. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in. And this is Apollo. How are you doing, friend? I'm doing great in Shanghai. Well, I say great, but the, the, the longer the time goes on, the hotter and hotter we become because it is boiling out here. And we were already hot to begin with. So yes. that, it's, uh, I think about 95, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm, I don't work in those digits, man. 35 to 40 Got Celsius. You. Yes. Got you. Yep. Got you. I'm with you. I'm with you. It's hot. Bloody hot. It is bloody hot here. And we're going to be getting into a, a game that we're going to be covering. And so far, the tournament's going on for a while. If you didn't know already, we are in the open bracket stage right. of uh, the Intel Stream Masters Shanghai, looking for a couple of players, four players to be exact, to move on to the main tournament, which is going to be tomorrow. And we have a game coming up, and it's uh, between a couple of cool players, but it is an elimination game. It is a lower bracket game. Yeah, it is loser bracket. And this isn't a name that you generally see in the loser's bracket. We've got Ming Chul coming up, MC, right. as he's better known, up against Shigua. Yeah, and Shigua. A, yep, a local. A local here, yeah, you could say that. Um, we were going to cast the gym. Yes. We were going to cast Jim versus uh, versus. It was shuttle. Daisy. Uh, Daisy, because they just. Ah, uh, of course, yep. We were going to do that, and then really, really weirdly, we were like, "All right, let's go, let's go cast that game," and then the admin comes over to us and is like, uh, "Jim's been escorted off. He's having visa issues," and the first thing I said. He's Chinese! How is he having visa issues? Well, I, I didn't get it at all, but either way, we're not doing that game. Uh, this is yeah. the one we'll be uh, going into. Long story short, PvZ on the menu instead yes. of a PvP, so this will be pretty cool. Uh, I don't think we've seen a PvP, PvZ. We just had a PvT. Did you yeah. catch any of that game? Uh, I watched a lot of it, actually. Yeah, yeah. Jim was very aggressive. Uh, Shuttle was pretty normal. Played a pretty straight-up game. Yeah. But Jim's you know, a special kind of player. He's like one of the best Chinese players. He is. Uh, if not the best. So. Uh, you know, everyone's really hoping that he advances through, which is, you know, could be the case unless he gets arrested or something. Uh, then he should be going through to the main tournament. Well, fingers crossed that doesn't happen because we would like to see him continue. Where he is pretty deep in the bracket. Yeah. One more game off of the final. So. And, of course, the that does mean that he will advance to groups tomorrow. Yeah, so just one game for him. But another great Chinese player is Shigua, who yes. has been around for a very, very long time but isn't having, obviously, the, the big international results, which Jim is having. And to be honest... The only reason Jim's having it is because he's playing in WCS America and actually doing well there. Yeah. Um, so this will be an interesting one, but it is down to, or will be down to, of course, SK Gaming's MC, who is probably due a win. He hasn't done that in a while. He's a scary guy. He's a very intimidating fellow. Uh, and we're going to have to... Uh, oops, just going to have to drop out of that. Um, Shigua's got a tall order ahead of him, is my call, heading into this game. MC is, you know, he, he's not taking the big he's titles. He's the boss toss, man. He's the boss toss still. He's the Obama toss. He was actually wearing a President Obama t-shirt in the lobby of the hotel yesterday. Oh, I bet he was. He's, I bet he He's was. bad to the bone. He is bad to the bone. And he's also Mr. President, so Shigua will need to pay his dues. Will he be able to break through the boss toss? Only time will tell. Only time will tell, because like we mentioned before, this is an elimination game. It is in the lower bracket. They both lost a single game now. Pressure is um, on. Chigua lost versus Jim, if I'm not mistaken, in the first game of his tournament, which knocked him down. And then MC lost to da Daisy in a PvP. Uh, PvP yeah. can be a little bit brutal sometimes. It is. It's actually my favorite mirror right now, but the, the, the reason why I lack it is also the reason... Um, I guess Ming Chul probably lost, is that it's just so random. There's yeah. a lot of stuff can happen now with a cheaper Dark Shrine, um, Stargate open his new units. PvP yeah, I mean, you is can choose from all tech structures without really knowing what, you're, you know, what your opponent's doing yeah. and vice versa, so it is, does get complicated. But a matchup that is getting ironed out is Protoss versus Zerg recently. It is starting to get figured out a little bit. Um, not to the extent of Wings of Liberty. I, I don't think we're going to necessarily always see Forgefast expand anymore, but... Um, yeah, I think Gateway Expand a little bit more, starting to standardize a little bit more in PvZ, which yeah, I it's, like. It's definitely a build that a lot of people use. But it looks like we are now finally in the game, so we can begin uh, with the second game on this mainstream. Of course, there is a second stream that's been run by Nathanius. You can find that on Twitch TV or twitch.tv slash Nathanius. And that's of right. course, you're already here, so I don't need to tell you to come here. You didn't have to at all, though. I appreciate the effort anyway. So in the bottom right here, the local player, the Zerg. This is Shigua. Team Invictus Gaming, one of the best Chinese teams in StarCraft 2. Absolutely. And who we got in the top left here, Apollo? Up here, we do have the boss toss himself. It is SK Gaming's MC. And it is time to bring out a performance from this young man. I say young, and he is. I think he's, oh, I think he's a year younger than me. I think he's 22. 
Uh, but it is time for him. Yeah, he is 22, but it is time for his performance. In my books, that is quite young, Apollo being a 28-year-old How gentleman. old are you, 25? 28, heading towards 29, but I should have said yes to that. I just realized on the back end of that I was, I was playing you a nice <laughs> card, man. Yeah. That's, um, thank you for that, but unfortunately, he dropped the ball. So, so talk to me about Australia. You well, know, the, the country that we kind of gave away. Well, I don't know. I think I think in DreamHack, when you were casting with Nathanius, you dropped some pretty good knowledge bombs in Australia yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, how we all drink Fosters and drive on the right-hand side of the road. That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> Always yep. like to put a shrimp on that, Bobby, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I've been to Australia before. I yeah, have. to Melbourne, was it? Yeah, uh, Brisbane. Brisbane. Went to Brisbane. Bris Vegas. Bris Vegas. Is that what you guys spot. call it? It's our most swag city in all of Australia. Oh, I love swag. It is. Lovely I'm a temperature. Swabster. But, and uh, uh, I spent a lot of time on the in Surface Paradise, to be more precise. Ah, oh, very good. A very nice place, Gold Love, Coast. Lovely beaches, lovely ladies in that uh, Surface Paradise. But uh, I'm actually going back to Australia. Um, oh, look us up. Um, in May next year. Sweet. Because uh, it's my brother's wedding, so I'm going to go and I'm going to do Australian things, like I'll pot can of fosters and, can of fosters and drive and on the right hand on side. The Barbie. Yeah, sweet. Look us up, brother. It'll be great. So Where are you from, though? You're I'm, from I'm from South Australia, in uh, Adelaide. Yeah, it's yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's not far. Not Australia far. is like it's like what a two-hour train across east to west is. <laughs> yeah, something like that, right? I uh, can't even begin to explain how wrong you are. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying that. Um, how about we talk about Starcraft for a second? Absolutely, man. So uh, we've got the Zerg taking a re reasonably standard time hatchery here. Didn't actually catch that build order because of all your Australian knowledge bombs. So. We did see a fast expand here from MC. Is actually a forged fast expand. So yeah, it was like a, a 15 spawning pool into 15 hatch from the Zerg player, with yep. just two sets or just one set of Zerglings. Oh, two sets. Sorry, there was another one making their way across. Yeah. And then MC just you know trademark always forge, never Nexus first, which is really really weird sometimes. But yep. he just prefers to always go forge. So it was like a 17 or 16 17 forge followed by just a, a standard Nexus and. There's that, uh, very, that's quite an early third there, but reasonably standard, about 4 minutes 30. Yeah. And um, so we saw that pair of links heading down to the third, which is always smart. I like it when a Zerg does that. Don't want to get caught with your pants down with a pylon behind the mineral line or something silly like that. And then, you know, whoopsie daisies cannons and bye-bye uh, third hatchery. Yeah, I mean, this third hatchery is just in retaliation of seeing a Nexus Forge coming down. The, yep. There's no rush coming for at least two, three more minutes if there yep. was to be a fast one. So he's just going to extend his own uh, economy lead with that third hatchery. So we're seeing here like Wings of Liberty, like you mentioned earlier, PVC starting to get figured out just that little bit. So there's not too much aggression and not too much madness in the early game. Um, no, I mean, this is exactly the Wings of Liberty. Yeah. Like, it is exactly the same. If, if we watched this VOD and you didn't know which game it was, you couldn't tell yeah. until that Mothership Core comes out. That's so. right, which, which will be coming out very, very shortly with that Cyber Core finishing now. Um, so... I think he just barely missed that probe going out there. Just uh, barely, yeah. That's a little bit of a mistake there, I'd say, from Chigo. You always want to have your links where they are now, yep. so you'd always see the probe coming out. But it looks like it is going to go into vision range of the Zalnaga Tower anyway, so yep. uh, it is spotted quite easily. It does check it out. And that probe ain't going nowhere fast. It's going to get eaten up by the bugs. And, uh, yeah, no shenaniganry from that probe, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, it definitely could have gone to the left-hand side, maybe in, in, in indicative of some kind of rush play. But with the probe showing itself to the Zalnaga Tower and showing itself here, we're probably just going to see standard play from MC. And standard, when I say standard, is like a Stargate coming down. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of the, the most all-round build. But it is MC. You know, he does whatever he wants. And, and sometimes to, to his detriment in StarCraft. Yeah. He's, he, he, likes his, he likes his Phoenixes. I would not be surprised at all to see if you get down here pretty shortly. There's that Mothership Core on the way now. And uh, Sentry going down. So it looks like MC is actually playing extremely safe. Like, extremely safe. Yeah, he hasn't chosen any tech. You know, this could be for a very fast third base. And oh, yep, actually, there, if you see, right, there's, the, right. there's the Pro and Pylon. So no tech structure, but nearly third base. The, the biggest point of this build, though, very early scouted by Chigua. Like, yep. he has multiple options to choose from now, whether it be attacking it, teching up fast, taking a fourth base. It's up to him. Yeah, and it's great to have options as the Zerg. You don't want to make units at the wrong time, make hatcheries at the wrong time, because that will be GG. And we got Lair on the way now for Giga, so we're going to see what tech he gets into. Roach Warren will be the choice here. Some extractors going down for that extra gas income and going to be getting them upgrades as well. So Yeah, he's not really doing anything in retaliation. Sorry. This is very normal, I'd say. But one thing that he won't do is build units preemptively. He was just drawn up to like 75 or whatnot. Yeah. So the, the big play now that Shigwa should be aiming for 
is going up to Hydralis pretty fast. Upon the lair finish in, he knows that Hydralis is going to be very good, but look at MC though, yeah. look what he's doing. Seven gateways going down here from MC, hiding them at the back there, very sneaky cheeky here from the Protoss Korean. Yeah, it's a lot of gateways and uh, no tech, that's just pure gateway units. And with seven gateways, that's a total of eight with the, with the one on the natural. Yeah. He can very easily turn this, what it looks like the Nexus play, yeah. Very economy focused into aggression very, very easily. Eight gateways, that's a lot of units. Yeah. And Jiguard does have a ton of links out, but he's making a lot of drones right now and getting melee upgrades. And yeah, if MC wants to commit to a huge supply of, of zealots and go for it, it's going to be really tough for Jiguar. Well, uh, Shigua is getting the uh, melee upgrades here. And a bit Ness, so he's going to be very link heavy. Ideally, looking to go over towards Ultralis eventually. But for the time being, he sees a movement out here. Yeah, he sees MC posturing a little bit, just cutting into that uh, third here, but is he going to get anything done? Does surround the sentries. He doesn't quite pick one up, though. I think the lings will get cleaned up. Not too much just to, uh, to say here. And um, MC already just getting a, getting a bit of a look before his inevitable attack, Apollo. I feel like the attack is coming pretty soon. Yeah, he's starting to get ready. He's chronobusting at that plus one. He's, he's got a pilot on the left-hand side of the map now uh, with a probe. He's... Sending out Hallucinated Phoenix to find out his opponent's tech. He's definitely looking to kill this base at minimum here. Yep. But this is in sacrifice of upgrades, of tech, no Robo, no Stargate, no Twilight Council. So ideally, it's much, much, much more than just a fourth base snipe. Indeed. I think he's definitely going to follow through here. I completely agree. He might even just try and go for the win right now. And I guess he, he kind of has to, uh, uh, with the detriment of being put far, very far behind if he gets cleaned up here. So taking apart this hatchery yeah. will be cancelled. There it goes. There is Burrow on the way. If there was uh. to be Burrow Bane Links, this is a gateway attack. There's no robotic facility. There's no detection. There are multiple ways for Shigo to deal with this, but MC's coming now, and I don't think Shigo's quite ready. He's very stalker heavy here, and Shigo doesn't have that many units, Apollo. Going yeah. for a flank with the Links, though, at the back. Sentry's nice force fields deflecting a lot of that damage. And it looks like MC just might be able to power through. Yeah, he's getting closer and closer to that plus one attack. So far, the force have been good. Another couple do come down, keeping the Zerg away. With Time Wolf as well, really keeping the Zerg on this right-hand side. Oh. MC is breaking through slowly. So painful for Shigua. He is almost definitely going to be losing this third hatchery here. The drone's being pulled. He's trying to surround the Zealots here, but Zealot versus Drone's a little bit of an inbound matchup. And they are shredding apart the economy of Shigua right now. Yeah, these roaches, are, uh, they're good, but they're just not dealing the big damage out there yet. A lot of units have been killed from MC. He's taken a supply lead, and more and more units are coming in. That Mothership Core untouched. Absolutely untouched. There is no anti-air with the death of that Queen, and I actually feel like this is just not going to stop Apollo. MC smells blood in the water, and he's just going to go for it and uh, follow through. I, I, Jigua is starting to get a good, healthy roach count. Will it be enough? There's another warp in at the back. A couple sentries and some more zealots. The zealots really good at taking hits. Getting a little bit light on the stalk account. Yeah, not the best micro here by MC. Definitely wanted to pull those units back and get the zealots in there, but Shigo is pushing through. Even if Shigo defends this, yeah, yes, he's, MC he's down doesn't two have hatcheries. tech. He's to two hatcheries to three, 70 probes to 48. So MC's done considerable amounts of damage. He obviously needs to start thinking about a mm. follow-up, though, so this, whether it yeah, well, salty comes down or whatnot. Well, he doesn't have Blink here, so this, this whole ton of Stalkers is actually in a lot of danger. He is micro them very well individually, but with more and more units coming out here, Shigua should be able to push this back in. The Stalkers count is very, very low. Yeah. Does MC now just warp in units anyway? He does. He's like, all right, let's go. Wow, MC Three base is... Three versus two. I guess he's going to try and you know, prolong this fight, keep going, because he knows he has a better production and a better economy. Yeah. Well, exactly, and Shigua needs to make units to stop this, lest he fall dead. It's just really that situation for him. Very, very awkward situation. Pretty horrifying. Oh, oh my god. Cheeky that warp in. in. Ah, but the Burrow does save those roaches, but will it matter, Apollo? This yeah. third is under pressure again, just from these zealots in the Mothership Core. And yeah, there's the follow-up from MC, Robotics Facility and Armor. Starting to realize that, you know, I don't keep, I don't have to keep pushing through, even though I do have tempo advantage. Yeah. It's good that he's taking now. The Twilight Council going down, a second Forge going down as well. Does need to try and uh, pull something else out of the hat here with Shigua. With these units that he's made to defend, can now open up a small counter-attack window, and can he get the damage done? It's going to be tough. Yeah, this is definitely where MC just kind of takes a step back with sentries now, and really you know, controls the fight a lot more. Great micro again here from uh, Shigo. Yeah, the Burrow micro really saving Shigo in this game. Oh, not oh. too many force fields here for MC. Yeah, it's just only got the force, uh, just the force sentries nice and the force micro. fields down. 
brilliant. Just, uh, this is power in micro. It doesn't look all that impressive, but it actually is, man. Oh, look at that. Oh now my the sentries God. get popped as well. A lot of drones behind this. She was really pushing MC back. Absolutely, man. And this is looking actually really bad for MC. He can break through the natural. Absolutely. Well, more and more units are getting walked in. MC definitely should have been on the low ground. He should have been using the ramp to his advantage, force fielding it away. These, don't, these Rogers don't have more movement. But MC with a cannon and Zell's been walked in. Should be able to hold this back for now. Yeah, Shigwan doesn't want none of that, but a third is under pressure now. He only has the one cannon to defend. Can definitely get up there and do some, uh, do a little bit of damage. Does decide to pull out, though. Yeah, this Shigwan is... just uh, doesn't want to take too many risks. Yeah, this is, this is still good for MC, of course. I mean, such a high economy, been able to keep the unit count high despite losing a lot. And now at this point is where MC just gets his 2-1 upgrades or gets plus 2 attack with his Immortals. MC's going to go for another follow-up attack. He's going to keep on increasing his Stalker account, maybe add in a couple of sentries. Obviously, God in Shield would be very nice right now, but he is low on gas because he has double forge and whatnot, increasing Blink. But he, he will move out when Blink is ready again. Yeah, sure. absolutely. He's going to have a very high Stalker account. Lots of Zealots and uh, an Immortal as well. Probably charge for later. And there's the Ultralist Kevin going down for the Hive Tech of Jigua. So this is what you were saying earlier, Apollo. This is really what a Jigua wanted. This is the unit comp that he's working towards. And... and um, MC's going to have to really let him get there. Like, there's not much he can do about it at this point. Yeah, MC can't move out until Blink's ready, plus two's ready, maybe even the plus two armor as well. At this point, he sees his opponent has a lot of layer units. Ideally, you still want sentries in here, so I'm interested to see if he adds in some, because he would like to control this mass set of army. Yeah, absolutely. We see that the uh, investors are on the way for Shigwa, and that's going to be very good for the Blink Stalkers. All right, well, a couple of Zels do find their way to this third base. MC adding a couple of sentries now finally into his army composition with his 2-2. Definitely looking to move out soon. Definitely. Absolutely. The pylon's getting down, taking away a bit of map presence from MC there. Um, and he'll have to uh, reinforce this some other way. Or Ultralis on the way with good upgrades too, so... Always not lost there for Shigwa. Absolutely not, man. He's going to have a very scary, very large, and very beefy Zerg army with the upgrades as well. And MC heading towards that fourth that he sniped earlier it is back up and it is bumping. So been, oh, we've got an investor hit squad heading towards the third Apollo. Oh, this is a little bit interesting here. She oh, actually, to play they're, the, they're coming back because he realizes this army is very strong. Uh, I'm not too sure if there is enough energy for a Photon Overcharge here. I'm not Photon Overcharge, Recall, sorry. Okay, there is. So yep. if things do go wrong here, you can always Recall. But with two two upgrades coming in, a couple of Immortals, I don't think MC's going anywhere. No, I think he's very, very comfortable in with his army. That is a lot. Oh, God, and here come the Ultralists. Speaking of a lot, Fungal's going down on the Protoss army, and MC does recall. Doesn't want to lose that army. Didn't want to pick that fight. How do you think he would have gone there? Uh, I think that was a good choice to recall. The Fungal's locked a lot of units down there, very clumped up. It wasn't the fight he wanted to take, and was also very surprised by seeing the Ultralists come out like that. So. Yeah. It's a good recall. Recall. He can easily come back to, you know, more immortal prediction and whatnot. Ultra is definitely one of those uh, units that when they just appear, yeah. it uh, freaks you out and you do want a GTFO. But there's a lot of Bailings morphing in now. Shigo's going to, you know, potentially try to beat this attack down for himself, but we'll see how well this is going to go down. Ideally, MC should be looking All for these the next play, but... Nearly uh, does snipe one, blinking forward, getting a couple in, a couple investors that did have fungals. Oh, God. Oh, there's a nice fungal on the Stalkers at the front. The Ultralis is getting amongst it right at the front with a bit of a link, uh, flank here, but not enough units from Shigwa. Yeah, MC's just got way too much here. Bailings haven't done anything yet in this game. I think they may be coming around for a flank, but MC is just pushing forward here. Oh, yeah. And those Banelings, will they even finish? Will they make a difference? The Ultralist starting to get powered down. This Protoss army is well upgraded and strong. And it is packing a huge punch. A massive Zealot warp in at the back. Blinking the Stalkers back, getting some room for the Zealots. They will get up there. Oh, the Immortal's going to go down, though. Yeah, I don't think it matters too it much, doesn't though. Matter, MC no. having Blink and Zealots at 2-2 two, two upgrades. And no more ult. Zerglings and Roaches with a single Ultralist. That yeah. is not enough here. Will not cap the mustard, will not pay the bills, I feel, for Jigua. MC up 60 supply, and he is barreling through this natural, taking out tech on the way. Is this it for Jigua, Apollo? It definitely looks like it. That's right, MC. 145 supply to 88 now. And with the last Ultras falling down, MC should be looking to pick up game number one here of this best of three from the loser bracket. There you go. Very well played there from the Bostos. Yeah, the Bostos bringing his stuff to uh, this tournament. Of course, he is looking to make it in to the main tournament, the 16th player group stage that will be happening tomorrow. 
as of course MC, you know, only just making it into WCS Europe for Premier League this season. Took a while for his transition to really kick in. He needs the WCS points. This is a tier one event. He does absolutely. So maximum points for this big, for this bad boy. Yeah. I am Shanghai. Yeah, 750 points to first place. But there are a lot of good players here. MC is good, but I don't I don't think he's a top three player at the moment. So I mean, if he was to pull out a top three finish, I think people would be like, he's back. That's there would be a lot of be. hype, Apollo, from myself included. Big fan from the GSL when he was. Uh, well, it's a bit of a shame saying was, but that is the truth when he was the number right. one Protoss. Former two-time GSL champion, the Absolutely. boss toss, and not quite doing the same yet. But of course, he did have a spark of brilliance at the start of Heart of the Swarm with the use of Phoenix play to start up against versus Terrence. Actually, he was able to beat MVP in that tournament, uh, the MLG. So we, you know, we have seen sparks of brilliance, but nothing hardcore yet. And I think at this tournament and WCS Round of 16, just around the corner, we could see some magic happening from MC. Some magic. I love magic. So I'd just like to uh, thank one of our sponsors. Um, thank you for providing this awesome fan that we share and use in between the casts. Of course, there's a lot of other sponsors too, like Intel, BenQ, Raid Call, HyperX, but BenQ, you're, you're we the, love you, you're the, you're the one. You're the one I choose. <laughs> it's hot here in China, man. It is. Thank you for our Paddle Pop Lion fans, BenQ. We do appreciate them. I myself kind of looking like the Paddle Pop Lion today. I think we all are in turn. Yeah. Just it, uh, in this heat, man. Yeah, we all feel like we're wearing fur right now. That's for damn Actually, sure. looking across the arena, I see like the waves of heat, man. <laughs> That's how hot yep. it is here. Cut it with a knife. Oh, yeah. Let's get into this game. Apollo in the bottom left here. Going down in game number one. Can he tie the series? From Invictus, this is Shigua. And who's this? The top right. That is the Red Protoss player, Maynard. Well spotted. And he's from SK Gaming. He was in the gym today at 5.45 a.m. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding you. It is SKMC. I was in the gym because I, I got struck by jet lag. I'm... I'm not going to remember today by the end. <laughs> um, I went to bed at 11 last night and woke up at 2 to just use the bathroom. I was like, all right, you know, my blood is telling me to use the bathroom. All right, fine. And you got to listen to it when it's And I that. listened to it. Yeah. And then I could not get back to sleep. So I, I was awake since 2. I tossed and turned. I you know, was on Facebook. I couldn't get to sleep until, you know, I just couldn't get to sleep at all. Yeah. And then at 4 a.m., I'm like, all right, screw this. This sucks. Went to the gym. Went downstairs to the gym, and as I'm coming out at 5.45 after an hour and a half in the gym, MC walks in. My God, the dedication on that kid. He goes straight towards the treadmill. <laughs> so obviously feeling like he lacks a bit of cardio. I don't know, I think he's looking pretty good. He's lost a lot of weight since the last time I saw him on, uh, on screen. He did, he did put on a bit of weight, and then he's starting to lose it again for sure. Mad, mad props, good respect. He's got the dedication. I wish I had more. Dude, like, the funny thing is, is, is MC wakes up, like, very early here to go to the gym before the day, but he's not jet lagged. Oh. Which tells me that he usually wakes up at this time to go to the gym and stuff. That's right. pretty crazy. Well, as you'd imagine, myself being, or this being my first international casting event, I was a little bit stressed last night. Didn't manage to get any sleep till about 1.30, 2 a.m. To be woken up at 5 a.m., by my roommate who uh, was he drunk which who, no he was actually uh, annoyed because I wasn't meant to be his roommate and I got hustled got out hustled that, got hustled out of that room man I wasn't meant to be in there so at 5 a.m. you just were you were roomless <laughs> is that what you're trying to say no I went and had breakfast but oh, uh, the point being sleep was not had ah oh, I think everyone's lacking on sleep today the production's been working very very hard they to have get everything and, that, set up. and he was a production guy and I really didn't want to mess with him because <laughs> they've had a stressful <laughs> time. But, uh, you know, we're yeah. here and we're up and we're live and everything's looking good. Yeah, a little bit of difference with the opening this time. MC, of course, going through a one gas gateway expand. Yep. It's a little bit faster than double gas before the Nexus. Um, obviously slows his tech down a little bit, but he does have the second gas now. We'll be looking to do something. On the other hand, just a regular play again here from uh, Zigua, who went hatchery first this time over Spawn and Paul. Yeah. And oh. uh, has got one gas quite early. 
a bit of a danger, but did pay off with that gateway expand, so he can get away with it. Yeah. Um, another thing you can do here is, is, again, go for that fast third hatchery, but the thing is, when you go for that fast third hatchery, you open yourself up to that early gateway, early Mothership Core uh, attack, I guess. Yeah. Scout slash attack from the Protoss, which is always really annoying to deal with as a Zerg. Yeah, and, and just because of that, he won't grab too fast of a third. It's delayed by like 45 seconds compared to the yeah. previous game. And he took a gas much, much earlier that he can get zirkling speed in case we were to see something like that from MC. Yeah. And there's that third going down now for Jigwa. MC looking like he wanted to maybe drop a couple scouting pylons, but the scouting zerglings of Jigwa are winning the day at the moment, doing a good job and uh, catching those MC probes. They did a good job of that in the last game as well. Yeah, and MC just, he knows he's not going to get away with a gateway attack. So three gateways is normal after a gateway expand. You want to be able to have a comfortable gateway count yep. to increase your sentry count. And there's that star Get gate. ready to expand. And yeah, as you said, there's the Stargate coming down. But the thing is on Star Station, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Void Ray. Star Station's not a nice map for Protoss players. It's very difficult to play a normal game. Phoenix and whatnot into Sentry Zealot into a third base. It's so wide open. Good Zerg players will always punish a third base taken early from a Protoss player here. And Jigwa is indeed a good Zerg player, my friend. There's that uh, pylon going down there for MC. Uh, uh, actually, a, a decent r uh, rally location. Obviously, he'd want one a little bit closer to a third hatchery, but he's going to be just fine. We can use that a little bit later, cash it in. Link's getting in a little bit of a look at this wall, but uh, not much to see here. Mothership Cora tells him to get off the front line, and they will. Yeah, so MC's starting the Phoenix production, and he's warping in three Zealots. Depending mm. on how he plays this out, he can look to take a third base soon. He's only on two gases which means he can't really tech away from Phoenix production. He can't really throw down a robotics facility or anything to go to Colossus. No, he can so make a Void Ray there. He can make a Void Ray, but his options are kind of lining up to either take a third base or go for an attack. And with warp pins yeah. down at the south side of the map, not back at home, this is going to be an attack to Mancy. Absolutely. So he's going to have to send those across the creep. And this, with his position on this third and, the, and the, all that creep, Shigwa's actually going to have a lot of uh, notice, I guess, of these Zealots' presence. So. He will be in a good spot to, to, to defend, but that said, a lot of his units are uh, harassing the front wall of MC here. They're uh, kind of out of position. Yeah, Dude, well, I guess you got enough sentry there to hold off for a very, very long time here. But with Zirklings on the other side of the map, they're not back at home defending. Exactly. Where the Zealots are warped in in plenty. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That they're going for a hatchery snipe, man, if I've ever seen one before. That is indeed a hatchery snipe. Look at the amount of zealots. A flock of zealots. And in they come. That spine crawler is having a very bad day. Transfuse is going down, but not enough. And these queens are in trouble, along with the third hatchery. Jigwa bringing back those zerglings, but there's actually not that many. Not that many at all. And MC oh, needs to get some damage done here. That is a bold pylon. Uh, uh, he's feeling pretty good right now. There's a lot of units being warped in here. MC really needs to kill a lot of drones or kill a hatchery, yeah. because if he just ends up killing queens and uh, units, not the best for what he sacrifices, economy and, and also tech. And Jigwa is making him play Ring Around the Rosie right now, Apollo. These zealots are being kept away from the vital stuff. I mean, they are killing drones, but the hatcheries are largely untouched. Yeah, this is this is not the best attack from MC. Like, you, when you warp in so many zealots like that, it's like a surprise attack. Yeah. You don't really want to spread them across. Sure, he's killed off a couple of queens. But he's only killed seven drones, and I would have expected a lot, lot higher from Yeah, that definitely was not worth the investment here from MC, and Jigwa can capitalize on this now. He knows that that MC just pumped a lot of minerals into that attack, so he's going to need to recover. He's not going to try another one. And this gives him a good window to just lay back and relax a little bit. I mean, he does need to deal with these Phoenixes. They are going to be very annoying, but he has spores already in position. Jigwa playing beautifully at this stage. Yeah, these Phoenixes are a pain in the backside to deal with. But yeah, she, I mean, Ziggurat, I, I wouldn't feel too uncomfortable in this position right now. Having dealt with that attack, I'd be like, all right, time to drone, trying to tech up. MC, Definitely. what are you going to do now? You, you've done your attack. You're going to be very late to expand here because I have a lot of units which will slow that down. So MC's now kind of stuck saying, all right, well, I actually need to do stuff with my Phoenixes, which is why he's moving out with them again. He needs to do some damage. He does indeed. Wall here, this is a ling proof wall, no way they are getting through anytime soon. These Phoenixes still trying to become uh, a little bit more useful than they have been. Again, the Spore Crawler is down there, one Queen. It's actually not enough anti-air Apollo, I think that these Queens will actually get sniped. Yeah, so what MC's planning to do is to slow him down, Queens, Overlord, and then come with a big, big two-base blink play. Yep, as big, you can see. Big. So, killing Queens, slowing the production, killing Overlords, whatever he can get is what he's trying to do. But with Infestors on the way, or at least Pathogen Glance for now, and a lot of Lings with good Ling upgrades, he technically has what it 
could take to defend this if he doesn't get slowed down too much. Yeah, and actually in that first game, Zhigua was looking really, really good up until the point when um, MC got that death ball that, he, that um, Zhigua really wasn't prepared for. But um, up until that point, he was definitely winning engagements against Blink Stalkers with those investors, really making a huge difference. So um, this, is, this is his opportunity, I guess, to get some good damage done to MC's army when he the inevitable move out, which he knows is coming. Yeah. Zigwa sees there's no third, he knows it's coming yeah. for sure. The Phoenixes have to do a lot with the Blink Stalkers with the Immortals. Remember, there are no upgrades on MC's army. Sure, he'll have Blink, but no actually attack or defensive upgrades. If that 2-1 completes in the production tab, three additional spine crawls is a lot to help him complete those. With Infestors? I'm actually feeling like Zigwa is going to really... Um Trying to think of a more PC way of saying that he's going to poop on this attack from MC. He's going to whap, bang, wallop this army I here. I feel like he will, man. I, I mean, MC's micro is incredible, but Jiguar's just got every tool that he needs to deflect yeah. it. It's down to the Phoenixes. Can the Phoenixes pick up some of those tools? Yes, he'll Can the Phoenixes pick... get to the Infestors? Can yep. they get to the Queen? You know, this that is, is what it's going to come down to a lot. And MC obviously going to be looking for that. Sniping some creep, some creep tumors, always a little bit handy. So he has his retreat path there. Going to be relatively creepless. And there he goes, picking up the tools of Apollo. One Infestor going down. Fungal on the Phoenixes. Oh, good force fields as well. Yeah, very nice force fields. MC's micro is still quite good. There's the Fungal going down there on the Stalkers. Time warp on all the units at the back. The Link's trying to funnel through. Does he have enough to defend this? Phoenixes have picked up a couple of Infestors. A lot of Link's oh, moving through here. That was a high energy Infestor that just got sniped there. And now the Infestors are gone. Yeah, look, 78 supply to 109 for the boss toss here. The boss toss could be looking to pick up this 2-0 victory. Zeke not quite ready, almost, but not quite ready. <laughs> Just on the precipice, Apollo, and unfortunately, when, you're, when it's at this level, when it's so, high, so high level, the Intel Extreme Masters at Shanghai, these players, one small mistake, two units less, three units less, and all of a sudden, this is what it looks like. And it is a hot day to be losing. It, it is not is a, a good day to be losing, losing in the Intel Extreme Masters in the open bracket. Shigua no. is down. He's losing this game. He's losing the series. And MC is now just seconds attacks, you know, <laughs> minutes away from picking up a 2-0 here. He is. And there's absolutely nothing that Shigua can do at this stage. He is down 50 supply. He's lost his hatchery. And there's the GG. MC taking a pretty convincing 2-0 there after that uh, second attack. So. Yeah, if only Shigua had a little bit more time, I think he could have done well there. Uh, but MC is the guy that knocks out Shigo from the tournament. He's lost one game already. This was a lower bracket game. MC lives to fight strong within yeah. that first open bracket. Picking out a local, hopefully that doesn't upset too many local fans. There's a lot There's of a passionate lot of nerds here. in the crowd today. Bit of a mosh pit, actually. There so is a lot of nerds A lot here. of people, so. And uh, that means now that MC moves on to play the winner of Shuttle against the Chinese player top, not to be confused with the Korean player top. And currently, Shuttle is winning that, so MC may play Shuttle very, very soon. A rematch from the WCS round of 32 group stage in Europe. They did play against each other. They were in the same group with uh, alongside Stefano and Slivko. But now, you know, Zeke was out. It's a little bit sad. It, it is, is a, a bit sad. sad. But MC versus Shuttle is a PVT. I want to see Apollo. That's yeah. going to be hot. That is going to be hot, just like we are and just like the venue is. And I'm not kidding you. I'd say it's roughly 40 degrees in here right now, even though it's the aircon's on. With the aircon, it is 40. 35 to so, 40 degrees, absolutely. like my hair's all kind of flopping down. Your hair looks, yeah. you know, just great. Mine's it's getting a bit knotted. Knotted? Is that what happens in the it, heat? It's a little bit. It, it's a fr it frizzes up a bit. You frizzes know. up. All it right, does. So the moisture, you know, the humidity. You guys got to keep your eyes for the rest of the day on his hair frizzing up. Mm. And uh, that's what that's us done for now. And Kolaris and Todd are going to come back up, and then we're yeah. going to do some rotations afterwards. Right. I feel good about my first cast, man. Yeah, it was That was good. fun. It was fun. That was fun. We're we, hanging out here. We need an Archon name now. We need an Archon name? How do you feel about Mainopolo? Mainopolo? Sounds like kind Apollo of... Apollonard. I think we're going to have to work on that, man. I think we're going to have to work <laughs> yeah. on our names. We'll talk about it backstage. Absolutely. Don't worry about it, guys. We'll get some. Okay. So it looks like we're going to have a commercial break. Right. And then bring some more games. So guys, don't go away. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters in Shanghai. See you soon. Bye.